Hey everyone, it's Charlie Morgan here and welcome back to another video. Um, I just finished this little drawing and I realised that that E looks a bit like Elvis has had a stroke. So I really apologise for that. But I'm going to hopefully blow your mind in today's video. Um, we're going to talk about belief systems and how you can change your belief systems and completely alter the way that you believe things to be true. If right now your life sucks, it's probably a product of your belief system. Um, maybe you think that money is hard to come by, clients are difficult to sign, business is difficult, you know, the whole 99% of businesses fail. It's extremely probable that if you're not happy, happy with your life, that your belief systems are to blame and your belief systems are responsible. And in this video, I'm gonna explain how belief systems work and I'm gonna walk you through a technique that I use to completely change my belief systems and completely remove all the limiting beliefs that I had. Um, and once I did this, it opened up the pathway for me to basically trailblaze my way to eight figures and hopefully nine and eventually you know, 10 figures, basically a billionaire. Um, I learned this from Sam Evans. I'm, I can't lay credit to this content. Um, a lot of what I'm gonna explain in this video um, was taught to me by my mentor, Sam, um, maybe seven years ago and I want to thank him for that. And he's no longer active in this YouTube space. So I want to be the mouthpiece of knowledge um, and I'm gonna add my own spin to this so that you know I can add my own experiences. I also apologize for the questionable facial hair and my hair is still wet, so I just got out of the shower. But you know when you're in the shower and you have this idea and you're like, okay, I just need to go and do that right now, like a YouTube video, for example, that's kind of what happened. So. We will get into this. Where is my rubber? Okay, there it is. Right, so we need to um, start from some first principles here because you need to know what you're dealing with. Um, I'm gonna walk you through how to completely change your belief systems. And like, if you, if you learn how to do this, and if you learn how to actually go it, get into your brain at like a base level and like start toying around with the way that you perceive reality, if time elapses and you work hard, your life will completely change, right? There's a series of affirmations and beliefs that I tried to install into my paradigm that I did. Like, for example, I used to believe that money was difficult to get. I used to believe that money wasn't abundant. Um, I used to believe that only as you have to be talented to become successful. I used to believe that, like, you know, I wasn't going to make it. And I used to have all this doubt about my abilities. Um, and that would hold me back and it would massively restrict my ability but the true root of limit is belief it really just comes down to your belief system so i'm going to explain it it's going to blow your mind let's get into it so we have in our minds belief systems right so what we can do here is we can segregate these two um, terms probably shouldn't use the word segregate on youtube but you know what i mean by segregate First of all, we need to understand what we're dealing with. What is a belief and what is a system? And once we understand what a belief and a system is, then we can start to make some um, progress towards actually changing them. But in order to change something, we have to first understand it, right? So um, let's start with the belief thing. And then we'll get into the system thing, because this is all gonna make a lot of sense, right? And I'm gonna to explain to you how literally your entire life is just the consequence of, of what you believe your life to be. It really is the case that um, it doesn't matter what is true, only what you believe is true because with work that will become true. That's a quote from Sam, right? So what is a belief, right? How do we define this and how do we understand it? So I'm going to put here belief, uh, I'm going to put the system. Okay. So a belief is basically a statement of truth, right? But really it's a statement of perceived truth. Right. So, for example, um, if I say to you, um, let's just stick with the financial beliefs, because I'm sure that's probably one that you really want to fix. Um, let's say that I say to you, money doesn't grow on trees. Right. That is a statement of perceived truth. Right. Or let's say that 99% um, of businesses fail. That's a statement of perceived truth. If you believe something, it is near enough impossible for you to behave in a way that is incongruent, out of alignment, or not conducive to the ascent of that belief. And this is a term in psychology called praxis. If you believe something to be a certain way, you will treat it in that way, and you will act as if it is that way. 
What this means is that it's near enough impossible for you to build a company and make lots of money if you fundamentally believe that money is difficult to come by. Now that, you might then think, well, it is difficult to come by, and you'll start defending your belief. But here's the thing, people don't have beliefs, beliefs have people. You don't have belief systems, they have you. Right now, you're not in the driver's seat of your belief systems, they are gonna control you, and until you make the unconscious conscious, it will rule your life and you will call it fate. Bit of Carl Jung for you there, right? So a belief is a statement of perceived truth. So anything, any time that you look at the world, whether it's a, a physical thing in reality, like a car or an abstraction like money, how you treat that thing and how you behave around it and how you act in accordance with it will depend on your perception of it. And that is what a belief system truly is. It's a statement of perceived truth. Right. Another example, um, let's take dating. Right. If I say, um, you know, pretty girls are not interested in men that make less than six figures. Right. To make a controversial political statement. I'm not saying that's what I believe to be true, but maybe that's what you believe to be true. Now, if you believe that to be true and you're not making six figures, you're never going to have a pretty girl because all of your behavior is going to be filtered through that. And even if a pretty girl was interested in you and you were making below six figures, if you truly believe that to be true, you would just self-sabotage the relationship or the connection you had with that person because it's impossible for you to behave out of alignment with your belief, right? It's kind of like this. Think of it like this. Imagine, for example, that your life is like a bowling alley, right? And we have, we have this lane, right? And here we have the gutter and the gutter, right? And so we have this bowling alley that you want to travel up. And here we've got the pins. You know, I don't know how many pins we actually have here, but you, know, you get the point, right? Right. And so we have the, you know, we have the gutters here, like so. Okay. Now, what you want to try and do is you obviously want to throw the ball down to hit the pins. And this is the pins here. They represent sort of, you know, what reality will actually be for you, right? And what the gutters basically represent is they represent your belief systems, right? And so what I'm trying to get at here is like, you know when you have in, in bowling, you know when you go bowling and you put the barriers up, you know, these, this represents the barriers, right? Do, 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 do. So this here is the reality that you can achieve if your current belief systems prevail, which they probably will if you haven't seen this video before or information similar to this. And these barriers are basically the perceived statements of truth. Right? So these are your belief systems. Right? Now the gutters here, they might seem bad, but the gut you probably want to be in the gutter if you've got a faulty belief system. And this this is a weird metaphor, but let me explain. So you know if you throw a ball, right? Let's say that you know, let's say that this bowling alley in question represents trying to make money, right? Now if your goal is to make money and you start taking action to make money, you know when you throw a ball and it's sort of you know, you might throw it and it bounces off here, it bounces off here, bounces off here, bounces off here, like, and then that's it. This is the reality that can manifest as a result of you believing what you believe. So if you believe money is hard to get and money is hard to come by and money is scarce and money doesn't go on trees and all this stuff, then the pins that you're going to hit in life is that money is hard to get. It's going to be, you know, financial restriction and a severe lack of financial freedom. And so what your belief systems do when you're taking actions in your life is they restrict your actions specifically between this so that you have to end up hitting the pins, right? So another example, um, let's go back to this pretty girl thing and, you, and your belief is that no pretty girl will be interested in me if I'm not making six figures, right? To, once again, I'm not saying I believe that, I'm not saying you should believe that, it's just something that people believe, right? In certain circumstances, in certain circumstances, right? I almost said circumcision, then that would have been pretty embarrassing and weird, wouldn't it? But the point is that, you know, you're going through life and you believe this thing that you can't get a pretty girl if you're not making six figures. And so you've got, you know, your belief systems here and you're going to act, but what's going to end up happening is you're going to hit the pins of the belief, which means that you're not going to get a pretty girl because you believe you can. It's just impossible to do what you, like it's, it's try to behave out of alignment with what you believe to be true. If you don't like Trump or if you don't like a certain politician, Try and go and vote for them. You won't do it. You'll be like, well, why would I do that? I don't believe it. Or, you know, if you believe that um, being vegan is a bad thing and that your belief system is that being vegan is bad, try and go and be vegan because you can. It's impossible to behave out of alignment with these things. And so when you set a belief, you set a reality. 
right? You set a concrete state of future for yourself. When you tell yourself something is true in a, in a certain way, you ultimately restrict your entire, like you, you restrict your entire life to that statement. You tie yourself to it, you don't have it, it has you, and it will, you will bounce between certain belief systems to achieve a set reality. And this is like basically your life. If you believe that money is hard to get, as you go through life, you will bounce between those beliefs. And, you'll, and maybe if you start to make some money and you start to like, you know, become financially free, you'll break it all down because fundamentally you believe that it's, this, this isn't how the world works. This is a scam. This isn't like, this is all gonna go to crap in like two months. And you'll just boop, 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 boop. And then you'll end up hitting the pins that you probably don't wanna hit. The better way to do this is to sort of flip this, right? Because right now the, the pins are surrounded by this sort of negative belief system, right? The better way to do this is to reframe the beliefs and take charge and sort of set them and control them. And tell yourself money is easy to come by. I can give you an example of this, right? So when I was, um, when I was trying to build my first company, my first agency that we got to seven figures, um, I, when I started that agency, I fundamentally believed that it was difficult to set appointments, right? And that it was, it was near enough impossible for me to reliably, consistently, predictably book appointments for my, for, my agent, for my agency. And maybe you're struggling with this as well. But what I realized is it didn't matter what copy I used. It didn't matter, it didn't matter what system I used. It didn't matter what I did to try and get clients and try and get appointments on the calendar. Fundamentally, I believed that it was difficult and I believed that I was never going to make it happen consistently. And so even when I stumbled across something that would have enabled me to be consistent with the appointment booking, I ultimately sabotaged that thing because it was like I had these belief systems and if I started to go into the gutter, you know, if, if, like I, if I almost went into the gutter, which would basically be behaving out of alignment with what I believe to be true, my, my, my consciousness would just bounce it back and bounce it back and bounce it back until we eventually achieved no appointments at all. And so one of the best things I ever did in my life, in my business, for my business progress, is I basically made a list of all of the beliefs that I had surrounding the thing that I was struggling with, and then it became super clear and apparent what the problem was, right? And so I actually made a, a video on this called The Outreach Epiphany, um, which was, which was I mean, maybe about two years ago or something. But what you want to do, if you're struggling to achieve something, if you're struggling to win, if you're not making progress, do an audit of your belief systems, right, surrounding that thing. Like, what do I actually fundamentally believe to be true? What is my perception of truth about this thing that I'm dealing with? And it's extremely likely, if not near enough, almost always the case, that the reason you're struggling is because you believe it should be the case, right? If, if you've always, like, one thing I used to struggle with was gaining weight, right? Before I did this insane bulk and, and put on loads of weight, I used to be really skinny. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm not a big guy, right? I'm like 80 kilos now, but I used to be like, you know, super skinny, like 70 kilos, and I gained like 10 kilos in like six months. Wouldn't recommend that, it was um, pretty hot, hellish to do, but I did it. And prior to that bulk, I always believed that I just struggled to gain weight. Like, I can't gain weight, and I'm a hard gainer. Like, like I'm not built to, to gain weight. And I had all these beliefs. And it was, it, and the thing is, is, you build these beliefs based off of, you know, your perception of the truth which is, you know, of course it's always been difficult for me to gain weight. I was skinny as a kid, I was skinny growing up, doesn't matter how much I ate. But for as long as I kept telling myself that, it was just impossible for me to gain it. So it's so important that if you want to fix a problem in your life, you start with the root of the problem, which is the belief system. The symptom of psychological disease is behavior, right? But the root of the disease, you know, the real rot, the thing at the big, the conception of this problem is essentially what well, genesis of this problem is the belief system, right? So a, be a belief is basically a statement of truth. Um, it's and the thing is about this is I say the truth, but the truth is obviously subjective, right? So some people will believe different things to be true than others, and. It, you know, often there's no real right or wrong. It's just, you know, who is objectively closer, no, who is subjectively closer to the objective? But there's a, that's a question for another day, right? The whole truth thing. But I'm hoping this is starting to make sense. A belief is a statement of truth about something that you're dealing with. And it fundamentally like impacts how you deal with that thing. So one of the smartest things that I did was just reframe my relationship with money, my relationship with health, et cetera, et cetera. And Almost always when I have a problem in my life, all I have to do is look at my belief systems. It's just as simple as, it's just simple as like, okay, 
oh yeah, um, you know, we had like a down quarter, why? Oh, well, because I believe this, blah, 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 right? So um, the, the next question really is like, how do your beliefs form over time? Like, because I can tell you now that there's a cause to every effect, every action has an opposite and equal reaction. So you've got all of these beliefs in your head and you've got all these things in your mind about how the world works and the way that you orient yourself in it that fundamentally restrict your ability to be successful. And I can tell you now that 99% of your belief systems are probably out of alignment with the objective nature of the world, which is totally fine. And really your entire goal in life should just be to line yourself up with the truth, right? And, and sacrifice your ego in the process. But in order for you to do that, you have to understand where these things actually come from, right? So once again, I can't lay claim to the um, ideation of what I'm about to explain. This was from Sam, my mentor, right? So the idea is that, how would I even draw this? Um, yeah. So the idea is that a belief system is as simple as a binary scale, right? So you know how like you've got like a, a scale like this, right? And this can be this right here scale, right? So. When we, when we think about beliefs, we need to have something tangible. So let's just, let's just once again take money, right? And we'll take money in terms of, you know, whether or not it is um, abundant, like, you know, restrictive, or whether or not it is easy to come by, right? So we've either got, we've got really two types of belief when it comes to money. We've got Negative belief, which is money's hard to make, money's difficult to come by, I can't save money, or any and list, you know, you can have hundreds of these statements. And you've got money is easy to come by, right? Um, I'm just gonna write something else here. Um, okay. So here's how it works, right? In your in your um awareness and your in your consciousness, you essentially have five senses, right? And Throughout your life, you're going to have experiences. And an experience is essentially um, like a, a sensory experience, right? It can be a sensory experience or it can be a, a non-sensory experience. So there's, there's two types. So you can have a sensory experience or an imaginary experience. And when you have experiences, typically in life, relevant to something specific like money, experiences are either positive or negative, right? It, that's kind of almost always how it works. So when it comes to something specific like girls or money or food or your weight or your relationship with your parents or whether or not you like beans, whether or not you like Nazis, whether like all these things that you can form belief systems around, like you're gonna have experiences, right? And so this can either be sensory or imaginary. So a sensory experience is essentially when one of your five senses receives information relevant to the thing in question. So for example, you know, in terms of sensory experiences, let's say that when you are nine years old, you go out to a super expensive restaurant and you eat super expensive food. Now you probably haven't got the intelligence at the age of nine to comprehend you know, the price of food and stuff like that. So let's actually just pretend that you're 15, right? And you go out and you go out for dinner and let's say you go out with, um, you know, like one of, you've got a really rich uncle, right? And your really rich uncle, they take you out to this dinner and you eat the expensive food and it tastes amazing. So that's one sense of like, oh my goodness, like I'm basically eating money. You know, you've got the ambience of the restaurant, you've got the, um, you can see the price of the bill, you see the thing and your uncle's like, oh, it doesn't matter, whatever, I'll just buy it, blah, blah, blah. And so you essentially have an experience, right, in, in, from, from your senses. You know, your senses are registering stimuli in your environment and processing them into your brain. And when you have a sensory experience, you form an, basically an either positive or negative belief, right? And so what this means is this scale, is you have a scale, which is basically a belief scale, for almost every single thing in the world, right? So. For example, I can just give you a simple example. In my apartment, or my well, apartment, in my house, I've got all these plants. I don't know if you can see those. I've got all these plants. And so my belief system is that having plants in your office is nice and good. And that's because when I was growing up as a kid, my mum was obsessed with house plants. And so, you know, she'd always tell me how much she loved them and how good they were for environment and how good they were for working and stuff. And, you know, she was really into um, gardening and nature and plants. And so as a kid, like I had loads of sensory experiences about plants being good. 
if you look at your environment, you might not have any plants in your environment and then, and then be like, why? Well, you never had any positive experiences with them, right? And I know that's weird, but I have a scale for plants, right? So whether or not I believe that plants are good to have in an office, it, every single nuance of your psychology is based off of this model of, of this, how this scale works. So let's keep this one simple and go back to money, right? Because I could talk about house plants for a long time. But let's keep this thing about something. So whether or not you, let's, let's actually talk about, um, with, with money specifically, let's talk about um, like financial, finance abundance, right? So, you know, with money, you're gonna have all these sub beliefs around like how it works and whether or not banks are good and like whether or not capitalism is good or bad and like what you think of this and that. But let's just talk about financial abundance because that's probably what you're looking to achieve from, from this video, right? So in your head, you have a scale and this scale is an unconscious measure of how money is and how, whether or not it's abundant. And so every time you have a sensory experience that indicates that money is abundant or scarce, you stack what we would call a rock on this scale, right? So what you have on this scale at either end is like a basket like this, right? And so what we're doing, basically, let's just attach these like this. Okay, so you've got two baskets. This one over here is for the positive side of money. And this one over here is for the negative side of money, right? So positive experiences go here, negative experiences go here. Now, if you have more positive experiences about money and financial abundance than negative experiences, then you will believe that money is more abundant. Now, this is not a binary scale. Belie you don't, beliefs are not binary, right? Unless we're talking politics or diet or stuff like that. This is a scale of sort of like how, like we've got over here, we believe it's really abundant and over here we've got no abundance. So this could be, I don't, it's a one and this is a 10. 10 out of 10 being like, everyone can be a billionaire, like money grows on trees quite literally, blah, blah, blah. One is everyone lives in poverty and, and the rich are just evil, right? And so this is a scale. It's not either I believe money's abundant or not, it's how much do you believe it and that will impact your behavior accordingly, right? But we'll get into this and maybe in another video. Um, yeah, the non-binary concepts are pretty complicated, so we can get into that if you want, put a comment, blah, 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 right? So every time you have a sensory experience, which means that in your body, you know, you either feel something, you taste something, you hear something, you see something, or I can't even remember the other one. Do you get the point, right? What is it? Touch something, I don't care. You know, I can't even name the five senses. You probably shouldn't listen to a word I say. But anytime you have a sensory experience, for example, if you're, if you're watching a YouTube video and you see someone that has a really nice house, or if you're listening to a podcast and you, know, you hear Warren Buffett talk about how the market's huge, or you eat a really expensive steak, or you know, you're, you're touching some silk that's really expensive, any sensory experience that is like, oh my goodness, money's abundant, what happens is you stack rocks on either side of these, right? So if the experience is positive, for example, um, you're five years old and your dad gets a $10,000 bonus from work and he buys you a new toy. Here you go, son, I got a bonus. You know, dad had a really great day at work. He's, got, he's made a load of money. This is for you. That's a positive experience with money, right? And so if that happened, you know, you're gonna stack a rock over here on the positive experience side of the scale. But if you had a negative experience when you were say four or five years old and you know, maybe you're watching your mum cut coupons out of a you know, newspaper and she's saying, oh, I gotta cut these coupons because you know, we haven't got any money, money is really scarce. Well, that's gonna stack on this side, right? Now, different rocks have different sizes depending on the emotional impact of the experience. So the more positive the emotion, the more strong the emotion on either side of the scale, the stronger that will weigh. For example, one negative experience um, can completely skew your entire life, and that's called trauma, right? So, you know, let's say, for example, um, when you're seven years old, your dad goes bankrupt, and you go from living in a nice, good home to literally being homeless. That's a traumatic experience, and it doesn't, like, that scale is gonna tip. Even though you've just got one rock, one rock can, like, one negative rock can outscale and outweigh 
100 positive rocks. And likewise, one positive rock can outweigh and outscale 100 negative rocks. And so what happens over time is, let's say, for example, um, you know, that we have um, way more you know, positive experiences about, about money when we're growing up, you know, and all of these sensory experiences, and maybe we maybe we've got a couple of bad ones. You know, maybe like our neighbours like go bankrupt, or maybe we two thousand eight financial crisis. We see the news that it's like ah oh, no, everyone's going broke. But for the most part, throughout your throughout you know your life up until now, the sensory experiences and the stimuli that has presented itself to you through your environment has been overall net positive by a little bit. Well, what's going to happen if that happens, right? is the scale is naturally going to be tipped for you, right? And so it might look like this, right? Where we've got, you know, the positive over here with all the rocks, blah, 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 right? And then we've got the negative over here with a, with a couple of rocks, but nothing significant, right? And so this person's scale, you know, throughout their experiences is positive. And this means that money is abundant. Now, they won't, they might believe that it's, you know, abundant, but once again, it comes down to how abundant specifically do you believe money is. But I'm hoping you start to get this point. Your experiences form your belief systems, and you should never be attached to a belief system. People get their ego so intertwined and wound up with these when all a belief really is is a collection of statements about or a collection of experiences about something. And this is where the kicker comes in because. Just because you experience the world in a certain way, that does not mean it's that way for everyone. And this is something that you're going to have to learn and have to realize and develop your, you know, emotional and spiritual maturity. Just because the world was a certain way for you growing up doesn't mean it's that way for everyone. Likewise, if, if one person has a really positive experience growing up with money and they believe money is abundant, and so they can go on. If you're wondering why the rich get richer, by the way, it's as simple as that. <laughs> You know, rich kids grow up, they see money as extremely abundant, their belief systems toward money are biased towards money being abundant, and so they act in accordance with that and go and make a ton of money. Poor people growing up, they don't they believe that money is restricted and fundamentally impossible to make, and that only people who are born into money can make money. And how how on earth do you expect to make money if you fundamentally believe that it's it's restricted and it's impossible to make? You can. But then you're like, then you ask me, well, Charlie, but that's that's the way the world works. It's how it worked for you, right? And just because it worked for you in the past that way doesn't mean it has to work for you that way in the future. So, you know, just in the same way that it could tip positively, the scale could also tip, you know, negatively, where, you know, we've got like, you know, some very significant, you know, negative experiences, you know, maybe like a huge big negative experience like this. And, you know, we've got just a couple of positive ones. And so we naturally, you know, Bias towards thinking that money is difficult to make, right? So the point here is that you might then be thinking, okay, well, I'm kind of screwed. I'm kind of buggered here because I grew up and I believe that money is scarce and I believe that money is hard to come by. And, you know, you can do this with anything, by the way. I'm using financial abundance because it's the most tangible and probably the most emotionally attached to get you to watch the end of this YouTube video, right? Um, but you can do this with anything, but we're, we're going to stick to the financial one because this video is about how to help you make money, right? Um, but you might be thinking, well, damn, I am screwed then because I grew up and I didn't, we didn't really have much and like, sure it was modest, but I'm, I just firmly believe that getting clients is going to be hard and making money is going to be hard, blah, 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 blah. So great. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks for letting me know that I'm screwed and this is, and blah, blah, blah. The point I'm about to make is this is not deterministic. Just because it's been this way up until now and all your behavior has come out of your bias towards the lack of financial abundance or, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be that way forever. You can literally change this and you can literally flip the scale. I used to think that money was abundant. My father, um, I love him. I love him to bits. I've got a great relationship with my dad. My dad is, um, and he'd be happy for me to say this, he'd be proud of this. He is quite um, tight with money. He doesn't like to spend money. He likes to save it. He's always drilled it into me from, you know, from the get-go as a kid. Do not spend your money. Do not, you know, do this. Do not do that. Like, save your money for a rainy day. And that's how he believes the world should be. And that's his belief system. And he got that from my grandfather, who was a farmer, um, who probably got that from his grandfather, who was a farmer, blah, blah, blah. Um, but essentially, what your parents will do when you're growing up is they will share 
and almost force their belief systems onto you. Not in a malevolent way, but it's because that's the way they see the world and that's the way they think the world exists and works. And so they want to part that knowledge with you because they think that's what's best because that's how it's been for them, right? So I love my dad and I have no resentment towards him for, for, for having my best interests at heart. But if, if you mapped our belief systems about money, mine would be that money is easy to make. It's so abundant. And my dad was a successful man. I say was as if he's died, but he's retired now. Um, but my dad believed, um, you know, you, you've got to get the nine to five. You know, you work for all these years. Um, he had a really good career in finance. I love him to bits. We have a great relationship. But it's funny nowadays because... I have, him and I have completely different um, belief systems on how money works and, and how abundant it is and how you make it and everything like that. Um, and so my dad's way more risk averse, way more like, you know, save it. And I'm way more just like, you know, spend it and just have a good time. Although, you know, within reason, right? I haven't got my Casio on today and my t-shirt costs about $5. So you can see how it rubs off, right? But ultimately we're very different in that regard. Um, and so my point that I'm making there with my dad is growing up, I didn't have negative experiences with money because we never struggled financially, but my dad would make lots of statements about money that would bias my belief in a negative way in terms of financial abundance. So, you know, saving money, it's not easy to come by. Um, you've got to work, you know, years and years before you actually start to make good money. All these things, you know, not negative things to say that it's pretty reasonable advice, but entrepreneurially, it's going to be quite restrictive, right? Um, and so my natural scale was biased towards negative experience in that regard when I was around, you know, 18 to 19, when I started my first business. And I have been able to, over time, completely skip, skip that belief system and tip the scale, you know, to bias towards financial abundance, right? And to really, you know, have so many positive experiences with it that I bias it. Now, your question might then be, okay, Charlie, well, how? Because, like, it, you almost think it's a chicken in the egg scenario, right? If I need belief systems to line up with financial abundance before I can have financial abundance, but the only way that I can have the belief system change is by having sensory experiences that it has changed, how the hell do I do that? Because you have this, this natural sort of catch-22. It's like, okay, well, I need to believe money's abundant to, to like have abundant money, but if I don't have abundant money, I haven't got experiences that I know that it is abundant, so how do I do it? I get the paradox, right? Um, so let's get into that. Okay, so we've talked about this, and we if you remember, there's two ways that you can form beliefs. There's two like sort of entrances or portals to your unconscious that ultimately will enable you to believe the world works in a certain way. And as we've discussed, we've got this paradox and stuff, but what you might have forgotten is there's another way for us to have experiences. Remember, it's experiences that stack this scale and tip it either way, so positive or negative. For example, you probably don't like Nazis. I would hope you don't like Nazis, right? And the reason that you don't like them is because you have had lots of negative experiences with them throughout history class, throughout movies, throughout books, throughout anecdotal stuff. You've probably heard lots of bad things about them. And so if you ask the average person in the modern world, what's your belief about Nazis, you're probably going to say they're evil, they're bad. And that's because, and objectively, they absolutely are, right? But that's because you've had so many negative experiences. But there's some people in the world called neo-Nazis who, you know, love the Nazis and think that Nazis are God's gift to the earth, which I couldn't disagree more with. But the reason that they believe that's the case is because they've had lots of positive experiences from psychopaths who just think that Nazis are good, right? So... This can work in lots of different ways, but now let's talk about imagination, right? And imaginary experiences. Because the sensory experiences, they sort of set the tone for your you know, belief systems. And ultimately, like your entire life is, is predictable by nature. It's predictable. If, if you understand someone's belief systems, you almost always are able to predict and understand their behavior, right? And all you really have to do to understand someone's belief systems is to understand the sensory experiences they've had throughout their life. But there's one variable that we need to account for. <clears throat> and that is imagination. So, how do I spell that right? I think I might, I might have messed it up. Maybe, I, maybe I've messed it up. But either way, imagination, right? This is using your brain to create experiences. I'm going to give you an example. Right now, um, like, you know... 
for, a, for an experience to be positive or negative in terms of the impact it has on your belief system, it has to register some sort of emotion, right? Because if it doesn't register an emotion, it technically doesn't get into your thalamus and actually mess things around with your belief systems, right? So what I want you to do is I want you to think, I want you to close your eyes or you don't have to close them. You might feel a bit weird, but I want you to remember a memory and I want you to go into your head now and I want you to go back to something that happened recently or whatever recently that made you feel really embarrassed or maybe made you really cringe, right? Um, <clears throat> like I want you to go back to something that you did or something you said, you know, I'm sure you've got it. And it made you feel, oh, just cringe and horrible, right? I know I've got a fair few of those examples, right? So go into your memory and just imagine it. Imagine something that you've done in the past that's really cringeworthy and makes you feel really sort of like, oh. Or go into your memory and just imagine something sad, something that happened to you that is sad, right? So I hope you've just done that. Now, what you've done is you've used your imagination. And in the process of using your imagination, you have created an experience, right? So remember, we've got experiences that can be positive or negative, and they can be created in two ways, right? Sensory or imagination. So imagination, we really can split this into two forms, right? We have um, our actual imagination. Um, right? Imagination, we can actually just call this visualization. and memory. So this works in two ways. Visualization is a, is a method, is a form of imagination, and this, this works on the future, and memory works on the past. So what can happen with your belief systems? Remember what I talked earlier about with the rocks and the stacking scales, and it can go up and down and stuff like that? You can have one negative experience about money, right? Um, and that negative experience can be stacked over and over again if you continue to play that back in your mind, right? So your imagination is way more responsible for your belief system stacking than your sensory experiences because your sensory experiences are fundamentally limited, right? So let's say you have one negative experience to do with money, you know, one time, you know, where, you know, you're at a restaurant, you know, and you're at a restaurant and your father goes to pay for the food and you know his card fails and then it's really embarrassing because he can't pay for the food because he doesn't have any money right that, that that's like just an example it's not happened to me as an example but like you know let's just say that that was like you know you have one negative experience is really embarrassing about money right now you have, this is this is one experience this is a standalone single experience but every time you replay that experience in your memory it becomes a secondary experience so suddenly you've had two. And if every time you think about this and replay what happened in your mind and feel the emotions associated with it, you are creating more and more of these experiences. Just one, ex one negative experience or one positive experience can become 100, 1,000, 10,000, depending on how much you replay it in your mind. And so this is why, for example, um, I can give you a perfect example. I believe that I cannot draw. And in case you haven't been able to tell, you've been watching these videos, right? I can't draw to save my life, right? And this is a belief system that I have about myself and the way that I've oriented myself in the world. And the reason that I cannot draw is, I've traced this back. When I was in, um, when I was in um, primary school, you know, I would try to draw things. And my sister, um, who's a year younger than me, so one year below me in primary school, is an incredible artist. She's very creative, very talented, and, you know, she was great. And I don't know exactly what happened, but my inkling is this. When I was younger, maybe six or seven, and my sister was starting school, and um, we'd be side by side working on like art or something like that. And I, I, I think what probably happened is my I, I would draw something, but my sister's drawing would be better objectively. And the teacher would say like, wow, your, your sister got all the creative genes. Obviously, you know, what a weird thing to say to like a six year old. But you know, your sister's the creative one and you're the practical one or something like that, right? And so what happened is I understand that I, I don't think I can draw. And that's a belief. And I've stacked the scales of drawing in a negative way, right? And that's because I've told myself so many times I can't draw because of probably one thing that happened when I was a kid. It honestly, there is like, 
anything, any belief in your life exists for a reason. It doesn't just come out of nowhere, all right? Anything that you believe to be true about the way the world or something specific works or the way that you work in the world came from somewhere. You can track it back and you will be able to find a single experience that you know started the entire trajectory of that belief becoming either positive or negative. And what happens if the experience is, is if, the, if the experience is you know super positive or super negative, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna continuously replay that in your mind because the brain craves emotional stimulation and you're gonna to continue to stack the scales. So stand alone, one teacher saying to you one time, Charlie, you can't draw, it's not that bad. But if that teacher said it in front of the whole class and now your sister's laughing at you as well, you're gonna to continue to replay that over and over again. And so whenever I come to draw something, I just, it always looks like a potato or a banana. I just ruin it. And that's because I believe I can't draw. And so it's impossible for me to draw properly because like, I just fundamentally believe I can. But I, I know this and I could address this and correct my belief systems, but I've got bigger fish to fry than being able to draw stuff right now, you know, in terms of my belief systems. Um, so just remember, so your memory is one way for you to cement your beliefs and to stack the scales. But another thing that you can use is visualization, right? And this is where you close your eyes and you basically visualize a certain state of reality that may be out of alignment with what you currently believe to be true, but you visualize it and you feel the emotions associated with it. And that's another way for you to stack the scales. So the real question that you're probably asking is how do I change my belief systems and how do I reorient myself in accordance with money or women or whatever it is you're trying to get? And it all comes down to how you use your imagination. Because if every day you wake up, you're replaying bad stuff that happened in the past about the things specifically, and you're visualizing things about the future that are just bad with accordance with the thing you're dealing with, you're just continuously exponentially stacking the scales, right? So an example um, of this is like, your, your body will respond to imagination. If you look at the placebo effect, it, it really does, it actually works. Like if you believe that a drug is gonna work, your physical being and your body will actually like, even if it's not, even if the effect doesn't exist medically, your body will still register it in that way and you know, you'll be better. So it's kind of like, it's pretty cool. Um, and so this is imagination, right? Every time you replay a bad memory, every time you play a bad visualization or a state of the future, you are essentially um, stacking the scales to be negative, right? So how do we use imagination to actually make this work? Well, I'm gonna put a plug in that and we're gonna talk about systems and then it's gonna come into it and it's gonna make a lot of sense, right? So let me actually just do this. Do, do, do. Okay, so in, um, there's, a, there's a, a field of study called systems thinking, which is a field of thought that you can apply and use to near enough everything in life to explain how things work. You might have seen me do it before on this YouTube channel. And once again, I got this from Sam. So I'm gonna just explain basically how beliefs work, right? So remember earlier we talked about belief um, systems, right? I don't know why that B looks so cursed, but you know we talked about belief systems. Well, we've explored the belief side of things now, and you should understand what a belief is and how it works, right? But now we need to understand systems. We need to understand like, how do these things work as systems because they are predictable and reliable and you know, by nature we can track them. So the way a system works is as follows, right? Uh, I'm just gonna draw it like this. Okay, if you're unfamiliar with this, it should change your life. Okay. So here we have the process, right? Here we have inputs, here we have outputs, here we have feedback, and here we have the environment. So the way a system works, essentially, any system in the world, in your body, so whether it's a solar system or um, a respiratory system or a belief system, works like this. Inputs are processed to create outputs. The outputs then feed back into the inputs and the environment dictates the processing of all of these things, right? So what, how this would work in terms of a belief system is very simple. Um, the inputs, these are basically, the, the input here, is information, right? And information is basically sensory stimuli that occurs in your environment. For example, I'm giving you information right now. And the process in a belief system is obviously pretty self-explanatory. This is the belief itself, 
right? And we now know that a belief is a perceived statement of truth. And so what happens is you're going to receive information, whether it's through a YouTube video, a book, anecdotal evidence from a person or anything. And this information is going to be processed through your belief system. It's going to be processed through the perceived statements of truth about the world. And once you process this, this the output of this is reality. And what will happen is reality, which comes as a result of it, will feed back into the information and you'll start to seek more information to confirm the belief so that you can confirm this reality even further, right? And the environment will just start, you know, pumping this out. So I can give you an example, information, right? So if I, if you come across, let's say that you do not like Donald Trump, right? You really don't like him. Your, your belief statements around Donald Trump, you've stacked the, the experiences negatively. You've got lots of negative rocks about Trump and you really don't like him. Let's say the information is, is this. The, the stimuli is a, um, a Facebook post talking about um, Trump's like plan for the, for the presidency, right? And well, you're gonna read this information and if you read this information, this information will be processed through the current perceived statements of truth you have about the thing that is in question, right? And so if the information is about Trump, and the belief is that Trump is bad, then the reality that you, that you bring as a result of this will be that Trump is bad, right? It's as simple as that. If you believe, and you start the scale to believe that Trump is good, and that you've had lots of positive experiences surrounding Trump, and you think he's God's gift to the planet, right? And you read this information, you're processing information through that belief system you have, and the reality will be that Trump is good, right? And you'll basically believe and think that Trump is good. And this is sort of a feedback loop, right? Because every time you seek information that confirms what you believe to be true, your reality gets even more solidified and that then feeds back into the information that you seek in the future, right? So for example, if you're on Facebook and, or if you're on YouTube and you see a video, like let's say you hate Trump, you go onto your YouTube homepage, you see a video saying, here's why Trump should win the election, you're probably not gonna click on it, right? You, the, the behavior, well really the reality, this is actually, um, behavior is the output kind of, but the information is a, is a thumbnail about Trump being good. The belief is that I hate Trump. The reality is you don't click on the video and the feedback is that YouTube stops showing you information about Trump. And this is how your reality becomes super, super solidified, right? You know, if you, if, if the belief is money is hard to come by and the information is, hey, buy my course, I'm, I'm gonna teach you how to make a million dollars. Well, if the belief is that money is hard to come by and millionaires are born, not made, then the reality is going to be that you haven't got any money because you don't take action on the information. I'm not saying you should buy people's courses. I'm just giving you an example, right? If you read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, but you believe that money is, is, doesn't work like that, then you're probably going to stop reading the book and going back to your miserable life, right? And then that's going to feed back and you're going to, going to start to seek information that confirms the reality that you already have. Because we don't, start, we don't seek information and we don't process information in a positive light if our reality is not in that way. So how do we break this cycle? You know, it's going, it's going round and round and round. The key is the belief system, right? Because information is very chaotic. You know, you don't know what sort of information you're gonna receive. Especially if you're on social media and you're relying on algorithms to present you th things, like it just, this is gonna, like, the, the environment will fly with this. The environment is like an algorithm, for example, right? On like Facebook or whatever. If you're on Facebook, you're asking for it, by the way. Um, but this is like, the secret here is how do we change the processing of the information, right? Because if your belief right now is like, okay, well, money's hard to come by, it doesn't matter what information you receive, it'll be processed, that'll be a reality, and then it'll feed back and you'll just have this exponential loop. You'll get to 85, die with no money, right? Not what you want to be. So it comes once again back to the imagination thing. So what you need to do is you need to learn how to effectively visualize. And this is kind of the point of this video. It's all about affirmation. And I'm not telling you that you need to sit in a room and smile to yourself and tell you that you love yourself for 10 times and then suddenly Marge Simpson appears in the mirror and starts shouting at you. Why did I say Marge Simpson? Who's that? What's that? What is wrong with my, what is wrong with me? Why did I say Marge Simpson? I meant like, um, I meant, is it Mary? You know, when you said like, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, and then something appears in the, I, I, don't, I don't know why I said Marge Simpson. I don't know why my brain went there, but I'm here for it. I like Marge Simpson, she's all right. Great voice. Um, anyway. So it's all about the imagination, right? Um, doo -doo -doo. It's all about the imagination. So 
Now I'm going to give you some practical steps to actually fix this. And I'm just going to swipe that reminder. So, if you're not happy with the state of your life, it's probably because of a belief. And you need to change that belief if you want to change your behavior to change your life, right? Everything is absolutely the belief. So, how do you do this? Well, the first thing that you need to do, the first sort of step in this process, step one is to list belief systems, right? So take the thing in question, like money, and make a list of everything that you believe to be true about this thing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to find you a real live example of me having done this. Um, because like I actually did this a while ago. Um, and I'm going to find it. It might take me a minute, so just bear with me here. But I actually did this. Like I, I know this works because I literally did it for myself. And this was for the appointment booking thing. So remember what I was talking about earlier with like, I was really struggling to get clients for my business and like, I just believed that it was impossible. Um, let me try and find this. Oh, I think I nearly found it. the quality of content you can expect when you come to my YouTube channel. It's just me on my laptop for like five minutes trying to find something completely unprepared. Here we go. Okay, so what I basically did is I was struggling and I realized this and I couldn't get clients and I did this now I've got like more, I like, I've gone from literally not knowing how to book a single appointment a day to having 10 sales reps and having more appointments than I actually need. Like we are constantly fully booked, right? So in, in the space of maybe five years, my reality has gone from like, I can't even book an appointment a day to I can now book like 80 appointments a day. And I'm my, the problem I have right now in my business is I don't have enough sales reps to take the appointments. And it's because I believe that appointments is, is so easy. Like I believe that booking appointments and getting qualified appointments with potential prospects is the easiest thing in the world. It's like, it's just like running a tap and drinking water for me. It's so effortless and it's so easy. And I firmly, strongly, honestly believe that nothing is easier and it's just the most obvious and straightforward and easy thing in the world to do ever. It's literally just like brushing my teeth. Like it's just, it comes intuitive for me. I have no struggle doing it. I can book as many as I want. I can control the flow and I have absolutely no problem or restriction in my life with regarding to appointments. If you ask me what I thought about appointment booking five years ago, I would have said, booking appointments is impossible, it's really difficult, no one wants to talk to me, but I've been able to completely re-engineer my belief systems, and I, I'm sure you can tell. It's the same thing with money. I believe that money is extremely easy to make. I believe that six figures is, is, is just effortless. I believe that seven figures are, is effortless. I believe that eight figures is entirely possible, right? Like, I believe that 10 grand a month is so easy to make that near enough everyone should be making it. I believe that money grow, literally grows on trees. There's so much out there and it's so easy to make and get if you know where to look and know how to do it. It's really easy. It's not difficult. Like, I actually believe these things and I know that you don't. I know that you're watching this thinking like, yeah, but it's easy for you to say that when you're already making money. But if you asked me five years ago, like, I'd be like, well, money is really hard to make and I can't make it. And like 10 grand a month is like impossible and like blah, 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 blah. Like, it's funny how I've changed over time, but it's not, I haven't changed. It's just my belief systems have changed because really what are we except from a big collection and cluster of beliefs, right? So let me get into, um, into this. I wanna actually show you this because this is pretty cool. So this is actually what I did, right? I don't know if you can see this on the screen here, um, but I basically went through and I listed out all of my limiting or faulty beliefs to do with the thing I was dealing with, right? So I'm gonna read them to you, right? So getting clients is hard, sales is hard, I don't like outreach. Outreach is painful. It's hard to get clients. I'm afraid of outreach. People won't respond. People will judge me. It's hard to land meetings. I can't get clients. I'm not good at outreach. I don't want to do outreach. Blank is more important than outreach. I'll just do double tomorrow. I don't get outreach. I don't have the right copy. No one responds. The market is saturated. I don't have the right approach. I should get the copy right first. My outreach problems can't be solved. Outreach just sucks and always will. No matter what, I'll never get meetings. I've already tried everything to get clients. There's too much competition. I'll let them come to me. I don't want to spam people. I'd rather do something else, right? 
those were my thoughts. I wrote down everything I believed to be true about average. And that then became extremely apparent and clear as to why I wasn't getting clients. How on earth can you get appointments if you think like that? Right? It's impossible. Of course you can't get clients if you believe all those things, right? But really, all of those beliefs were just me defending myself from pain. I was just in denial. Like, I wanted to believe outreach was difficult because I knew that if I started doing outreach, I'd have a business to build and it'd be painful, right? Um, so what I did instead is I, I did basically step number two. And this is actually, I don't know if you can see this, but this is actually the piece of paper I did that on. Um, and that, that, this exercise, this piece of paper quite literally changed my life. I don't know if you can see this um, on that legal pad there all those years ago. I wrote down all those statements and it then, I, I was sort of like, it was very liberating because I was literally looking at the problem. I was like, oh my God, this is exactly what's holding me back. For as long as, it's not about the copy. It's not about the, the software you use. It's not about the, the business model. It's all about your beliefs. And if you write them out and you see them, you're like, oh, of course that's the problem, right? So basically what I did is I took all of the um, faulty beliefs and step two, right? Step two is to perform the antonym exercise, right? So I call this the antonym exercise. Antonym basically means opposite, right? So an antonym is like, if you have a specific word, um, like, you know, if the word is, is wrong, what's the antonym of wrong? Right, you know, it's the opposite word of the thing. A synonym is a similar word used to describe the same thing, an antonym is a different. So basically, oh, nearly broke a bottle of water there. Mate, the amount of Evian sparkling bottles I've dropped in this house that I haven't smashed is, is commendable. But anyway, um, sorry about that. So, answer the next slide. So what you want to do is you want to make a list of all of the negative beliefs and limiting beliefs you have about the thing you're dealing with, like money or girls or whatever it is you're trying to get. And, um, and then you want to list the opposite of those beliefs. So I read out to you a second ago all of my limiting beliefs about outreach that were in play five, six years ago. And these were the opposites, right? So what I had to do was I had to root out the problem, which was the belief system, change it around, and I'm, I'm making a right mess of this video now. Sorry. Um, but this is, the, um, this is the, the way I did it, right? So I had all these belief systems that were wrong and that were limiting. Getting clients is hard, sales is hard, I don't like outreach, like no one responds, market is saturated, blah, blah, blah. And what I did is I inverted them, right? So I performed the antonym exercise. I inverted the beliefs and I, I wrote down the opposite statements. So that was, and this is funny because I now believe all of these things. I literally now believe the opposite of everything I used to believe. So I, I listed out my negative beliefs before. These were the beliefs that I wanted to install into my life at the time. Getting clients is easy. Sales is easy. I love outreach. Outreach is fun. It's easy to get clients. I'm not afraid of outreach. People will respond. People won't judge me. It's easy to land clients. I can get clients. I'm good at outreach. I want to do outreach. Nothing is more important than outreach. I'll just do double today. I get outreach. I have the right copy. Everyone responds. The market is abundant. I know the right approach. I should just get the copyright second. My outreach problem can be solved. Outreach never sucks and never will. No matter what, I'll always get meetings. I've never tried everything. There's too little competition. The market isn't saturated enough. I'll come to them. I'm not spamming people. And I'd always rather do outreach. So this is literally all of these statements here with a polar opposite to the things that I believe to be true. And so I then looked at this, the polar opposite and I looked at the antonym exercise and the list of things that were inverted from the negative things. And I asked myself, if I truly believe everything on this list to be true, I would then act in accordance with it. Because remember, it all comes back to this little diagram, right? You know, we've got inputs, you know, we've got, we've got information, right? We've got belief, and then we've got reality, right? And if you want to change, if you want to change your reality, you can't change the information you receive because that's up to the universe, right? And if you want the feedback loop to be so that, you know, your, your reality changes and blah, 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 you focus on the beliefs. If, 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 like, I was unsuccessful and I was completely struggling when all of the information about outreach was being filtered through, you know, all of these negative statements. But as soon as I switched the belief around, I processed this information in a completely different way, with a completely different mental comprehension mechanism, with a completely different paradigm, and my reality shifted and changed. Your beliefs create your reality. 
It doesn't matter what is true, only what you believe is true, because with work, that will become true. Sam Evans for you, all right? This information completely changed my life. It completely altered the trajectory of my entire existence, and all I had to do was make the unconscious conscious. All I had to do was question myself and look at my belief systems and ask myself, is that really how it works? Does it really have to be like that? Is outreach really difficult? Because there's a lot of people that get a lot of clients. Why does it have to be like that? And you have to just ask yourself why, right? Now, once you've made the antonym exercise list, right? And once you've got, I'm just gonna call this, um, I'm just gonna change this to the list. List, belief, right, inversions. So you wanna invert your belief system so you then see what you need to believe. Because I can tell you now that if you, um, if you list out your negative beliefs and what's limiting you right now, and you write down the opposite of all those things, like you want a lot, you can, I've, I've, there was like 25, 30 of them, not just like two or three, make the list of everything, everything you believe, everything you can possibly think of about the thing you're trying to fix. List out the, inverse, in the inverted version of that, look at the inversion and ask yourself, if I believe for that to be true, will I be successful? The answer is yes, right? Because it wouldn't be any other way. There'd be, there's a bit of lag, there's a bit of latency between changing your belief system and changing reality, but how do we do this, right? Well, the third step, is affirmation. So what you now want to do is you want to use your imagination to create visualized experiences in your head that tip the scales. So remember how I said this, where you've got these scales and they tip either negatively or they can tip positively, right? Well, what you want to try and do is you need to force this into your brain. You need to, the, the new belief systems that you have, these, these, these belief inversions, you need to replace these here with these here. If you don't, you won't be successful. It's as simple as that, right? So what you want to do is you want to take your list of belief inversions, this you know, antonym list that we just created, and you need to force that into your brain. You need to create so many positive experiences surrounding the, these belief systems that your brain has no choice but to change it's the way it perceives and believes the world, right? I'm living proof of this. I used to believe... I couldn't make money and get clients, and now I have more money and clients than I know what to do with. I had to move to Dubai because of the tax, for crying out loud, right? So, like, it's all about affirmation. So we've got, remember, it's, it's sensory or imagination. There's the only two ways that your brain can really process information to form beliefs. And so what we're doing with affirmation is we're basically using our imagination to visualize a better future. And so let me explain how to do this, right? So I'm going to give you some examples of some actual affirmations that I use every morning and every evening for literally about three years, right? And I drilled this home time and time and time again. I created voice notes and I would listen to the voice notes on the way to the gym, on the way back from the gym. I would listen to these when I was falling asleep. Like you want to drill this, those statements that you've just listed out, that you should list out now, by the way, if you haven't done it, um, you need to just repeat them to yourself so much that they just get ingrained and then you have no choice but to believe. Because this is how you form your beliefs in the first place. It's just through repeating the same statements, basically. So you can, you can undo all the stuff that you've messed up in the first place, right? So let me dig into this and see if I can find for you some affirmations, right? Okay, so here we go. I've already, I already got them up, right? So you can see this here, this list. I don't know if you can see this. So these are affirmations that I wrote. Um, when would I have wrote these? This was a long, long time ago. This would have been in, yeah, this was like 2018, my goodness. So I'll, I'll read you some out, right? In 2018, you know, seven years ago, I didn't, well, five years ago, it would have been 2018, didn't have any money, didn't have any clients, didn't have any appointments, now I have more than I want to do with. And I wrote this out, right? I, and I would read these every day. I have the power and skills to get as many clients as I want whenever I want them. I find client acquisition easy and I feel optimistic and enthusiastic. I love the fact that my agency onboards two new clients every week as the lowest standard. I feel beside myself with joy knowing I've nailed a system to do this. Bear in mind, when I'm telling myself this, I have no clients. So it feels like I'm lying, but you just need to drill these statements over and over again, right? I am absolutely effing amazing at generating appointments for my business easily. 
I have an amazing positive association with outreach and appointment booking, and I'm unstoppable in my appointment booking generation. I find building appointment systems to generate four to five appointments per day for my business easy. I am naturally gifted at lead generation for my, for my business and find that clients flock to me in abundance. The funny thing is all these things are now true about my life. Isn't that terrifying? I know you can't see who I was when I was 18, but I'm gonna read some of these out and these are all true. And I wrote all of these down, you know, five, six years ago and just repeated them every day until they became true. Doesn't matter what is true, only what you believe is true because with work that will become true. I love waking up each day knowing that my calendar is packed with high quality, easy to convert appointments. Well, look at this, right? If I hop into my calendar here, I don't even take sales calls anymore for my business, right? But I can show you this, right? So I've got all my sales reps here, right? This is sales rep number one. I don't know if you can really see his calendar. So sales rep number two, you can see all the appointments in there. Sales rep number three, you know, you can see all of these appointments in here, in America and so different time zone. Sales rep number four, you can see all the appointments in there. Sales rep number five, you can see all the appointments in there. Sales rep number six, you can see all the appointments. Sales rep number seven, you can see all the appointments. Sales rep number eight, oh, he's actually, um, one of our team members just had a son, so he's got his calendar off, so I shouldn't, shouldn't have shown that one. Sales rep number nine, you know, you can see all these appointments. So I've got nine to 10 sales reps that are always fully booked three days out in advance. And this is, all of these statements are true, right? I can give you another one. Um, one of the problems I used to struggle with was instant gratification and impatience. And so one of my affirmations was, I am extremely patient and I am hooked on delayed gratification. I love knowing that the cause I create today will create huge wealth and abundance in years to come. Knowing I am patient makes me happy and warm. And this is true. I am a patient person now. I can delay gratification. I have no problem with it, right? Um, you know, it's like I have no problem resisting impulses and delaying gratification. Patience is an integral part of my identity. And I know that with the right paradigm and action, everything I want will come to me in time. Like, you don't, I don't, I, I'm not sure you understand quite how scary this stuff is. I wrote down some sentences, repeated them thousands of times, and now they are true. I created a Google Doc that literally became my reality. I don't think you quite understand just how wild that is. And you won't understand how wild that is until you do it yourself. You know, all of the, what, what else have we got on here? Marketing is in my blood. I am one of the best marketers in the world. And I'm a magician when it comes to growing the sales of any business, especially my own. I feel powerful and extremely confident knowing my marketing skills are world-class. I just made you watch a one hour YouTube video on belief systems. I'm good at marketing now, right? You, you, I'm, I'm hoping you get this, right? Um, it's just like, and like, there's loads of these affirmations, right? You can see them, there's a lot of them. But all of these are true. This is another one, right? Um, <laughs> I haven't read these in like years, man. Oh, it's, it's just crazy. It's crazy. I used to not be um, particularly articulate with my, with my words. I know I slip up here and there on the, on the whiteboard, but I used to struggle with public speaking and I used to be, I used to find it difficult to sort of accurately articulate the point I was trying to make. I didn't have much verbal dexterity. And five years ago, I wrote this, this affirmation down. I am articulate and renowned for my verbal dexterity. I am gifted with world-class communication skills and this makes me feel strong and vigorous. And now I'm capable of articulating my thoughts properly. Another one, my training videos are impeccable. They're produced to the best quality and I find I can record long and complex training videos without error and with ease. I feel stimulated and thrilled, right? So this has all come true. I could never have done this like five years ago, make a YouTube video like this and talk to like 20, 30,000 people without seeming like a bit of an idiot, although I do seem like a bit of an idiot. So I hope you get the point. You know, another example I can give you um, is like, I love, um, I fill each and every day with as, with as many appointments as possible. Every day I do all that can be done to get as many appointments as possible. I do not procrastinate on outreach. I find it easy to get appointments and this makes me feel happy. So those are some examples of affirmations that I wrote five to six years ago that, that literally contradicted my exact reality that actually came true. So that's genuine, pure evidence that this works, right? It works. I'm, 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 I cannot stress enough how insane that is to me, that it actually works. I, I, at the time, I obviously sort of understood, but now I can look back at hindsight and it actually is a bit like, oh, damn. Well, that's kind of wild, isn't it? So 
with affirmations, what you're trying to do here is you've got basically um, a sentence, right, or sentences, and it typically is going to wrap this new belief into a couple of words, right? What you then want to do is you want to have an image to associate with the sentences, and then you want to have an emotion to associate with the image. Affirmations are not just about the words. Just saying, I, I, I love the fact I get appointments, it won't work. Remember, in order for an experience to register and to tip the scale and influence your belief, it either has to be positive or negative. It has to have an emotional sentiment to it. It has to make you feel a certain way, right? Experiences that have no emotional registration in our brain or unconscious will have no impact on our belief systems. And so just saying words won't make you, it won't, it won't work, it won't fix anything, right? Just saying words like, yeah, I'm really good at appointment booking. That doesn't, that's not gonna change your belief system. So the thing that people don't understand about the affirmations is the imagery and the emotion that comes with it. So every sentence, every affirmation, you wanna have you know, maybe 20, 30 of them, as I mentioned earlier with like, getting clients is easy, the market isn't saturated enough, I love competition, blah, 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 right? Or maybe right now you're starting a business, you're like, oh, I'm good. I can't beat the competition. Just, you can change that, that's a statement, that's a statement of perceived truth. How do you think all the guys that you're trying to compete with felt when they started against competition? Same thing, you can fix it, you can change it, right? So you want to have an image in your head when you say the sentence. So for example, um, if, I'm, if I'm saying to myself, um, like, I, um, I find it easy to book appointments, right? I love the fact my calendar is completely packed. I would, be, I would have my eyes shut afterwards, I'd shut my eyes, I would then visualize opening my Google Calendar on my balcony in my penthouse and seeing back-to-back -back appointments, like, because my calendar was purple at the time, back-to-back -back purple slots of time. And I would then close my eyes, I'd imagine that, I'd have my espresso coffee in my hand with the view of my penthouse, and I would imagine like it would be quite a little bit cold, the coffee cup would be warm, the brightness on the screen would be just a bit glary because I've just woken up in the morning, you've got that nice sort of October air, I can see what I can see, I can hear the birds, and I sip the coffee and I smile. That was the image associated with the sentence. And if you, if you create the image in your mind, what you've just done is you've created an experience. The brain cannot tell the difference between an imaginary experience and a real one. It cannot. And if you don't, if you're, if you're curious to know, is that really true? Well, remember what I got you to do earlier? When I got you to imagine a memory that was cringeworthy or made you feel embarrassed? Well, that's, a, that's an image in your head. You've imagined it and your body is responding accordingly. You're creating emotions. So your brain cannot tell the difference between something you imagine and something that actually happens in reality, right? So, and if you don't believe me, there's actually a study on this um, where they, they got this guy or a group of people. And what they did is they got this like really hot um, coal prong, like a stick with a big hot coal on the end of it, like a boiling coal. And they, they, got, they sat these people down and they, they showed the people like the hot coal, we're not gonna put this on your back, don't worry, but I'm gonna, I want you to tell me when you can feel it. And they put it like, if this, is, if this is the person's back, they put the coal nearly at the back so the person can sort of feel the heat. And then what they did at the last minute is they switched the coal out for an ice cube and they pressed the ice cube against the, against the, the back of the person. And the person's back would respond with blisters as if they'd been burned, right? Like they actually thought they just had this hot cold press against their back. So the imagination is just as powerful as, as, as the way your sensory perception of the world works, right? So you create an image. It's very important you create an image. Do not fall into the trap of just saying the thing. You have to visualize it and see it. You shut your eyes, you imagine the details. Another thing I used to do around this, I used to say, I love the fact that I've booked so many appointments and I've got so much money that I can afford to buy my dream car, a C63 AMG. Um, in fact, do you know what? Just to prove that this actually works, that was literally an affirmation that I used to have. So I'm gonna show you something. And hopefully it will change your mind and help you understand how this works. So here we go, look. I used to affirm it, I used to visualize literally walking out of my house and seeing exactly that. Do you know how wild that is? Like this, this thing here, that car, my, my dream, it's been my dream car since I was like 18. Like, do you know how crazy that is? So I used to like actually close my eyes and 
tell myself I had so many appointments that I could finally afford to buy the car I wanted, which was that exact car, matte black C63 AMG, stage one matte with a cool exhaust, blah, blah, blah. And that was literally like what I would imagine. That's actually what I would visualize. And now it's true. So this stuff works, right? If you, if you do this for, I would say probably two or three years, every single day, twice a day, as much as you can, and you constantly recreate these images and you constantly recreate and stack these rocks, you will in time quite literally be able to do this. And you'll be able, you'll literally have exactly what you want. Your reality will become true. Like, I mean, for crying out loud, it's insane how this works. Like, you know, I used to tell myself I wanted to have a mansion on the beach, right? What do I have? A mansion on the beach. And I'm not trying to, to flex on you and tell you like, you know, look at how wealthy I am. Please validate me because I'm deeply insecure about my, you know, about my childhood. Like, that's not the point, right? The point is that this works. I am living proof and evidence that you can literally shut your eyes, tell yourself something to be true, imagine it in your head, do that every day for about two, three years, feel the emotions associated with the image, and then start to act in accordance with the new belief. And then lo and behold, five years later, you have the best life in the world and you're quite literally content and happy and you have everything you want. I'm doing the same thing now with like private jets and yachts because I've still got lengths and downs to go with this, right? Um, so it works. The final step of affirmation is you actually have to feel and register the emotion. So what you'll notice on my, on my affirmations is I have the statement and afterwards I say, I feel joy, I feel happy, I feel free, I feel abundant, I feel calm, I feel collected, I feel great. You need to tie a tangible, positive emotion to the sentence. Because if you don't, it won't register. It has to register on an emotional level in order for the belief to actually to, to, to switch and change. And so what I'd invite you to do now is take some action. Look at the thing that you're dealing with that you're struggling with right now. List out everything you believe to be true about that thing and how you relate to that thing. For example, I'm not good at outreach. I suck at sales, I suck at marketing, outreach is hard. Write them all down. It doesn't matter if you've got 40, 50, 60 of them, right? And then, you know, pick one thing. Just the, the, the mistake I made with affirmations at the beginning was trying to focus on too many things. Just pick one problem and then make the antonym exercise, right? Do the list, invert all of the beliefs and write down the polar opposite of everything that you currently believe to be true. And then on side-by-side -side pieces of paper, look at both of them and ask yourself, what would my life look like if I believe this? which is basically your life right now, which is the current belief systems you have. And then ask yourself, what would your life look like if you believed the inverted list? And then take the inverted list, pick the, you know, maybe 20 key things that you need to change your belief systems with, write, put them into sentences, tie images to them, and then write emotions afterwards, say the sentences, shut your eyes and visualize what happens if that sentence was true, and then feel the emotion as a result of that thing. Like I would used to do this with the C63, like the car. Like I would literally imagine, like I, I imagine getting in the car, grabbing the steering wheel with both hands, seeing the little colored tip at the top of the steering wheel, like starting the engine, the cold start, the smell of the leather, the seat belt, like, cause what, what, what AMGs used to, what they do is they sort of tie the seat belt in and then the thing comes out. Like all of, I knew all the details. And the, 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 the more vivid the image and the more strong the emotion, the, the, the stronger the positive experience, the quicker you can change your belief systems. It is the single most important thing that I've ever done to my success. More important than, than learning anything is this, because everything is upstream of your belief system. Everything comes from what you believe to be true and the way you perceive reality to be. It is important, it's impossible for you to act out of accordance with what you believe to be true. And so if you want to change your life, you have to change your beliefs. And this is how you do it. This is how I did it. This, this has made me north of, what, like $20 million, $30 million in the last like seven years. This helped me build my first six figure business, then my seven figure business, now my eight figure business. Like it all comes back to this. And if you don't believe me, just try it. And if you don't believe me, well, I've just showed you evidence that it literally works. I've just read you out, like you can go and look at my landing page. In the description of this video is a funnel of me trying to sell you something. If you click it and you go through, you'll find there might be some appointments available, but it's, it's gonna be like right now we're fully booked. Now, when you watch this video, that might change because I'm recording this in January. This might be posted in a couple of weeks, 
but like I've got nine reps, 10 reps, and I can sustain appointments for all of them consistently. And that never used to be the case. And the reason I can do that now is because I believe that I'm great at appointment booking. You ask me like, am I good at appointment booking? I say, hell yeah. So that is how to reliably change your belief system so that you can make a ridiculous amount of money. Um, I want you to, I want to know what you want, right? So I can make these videos till the cows come home. So I want you to comment below what videos you want me to make, what you're struggling with, and what you really want me to make videos on. Because I want to make, I, I just want to make videos for people like me when I was like 18. Like if I had this, inf I had this, luckily enough, I had this information. I struggled for about a year or two, then I found my mentor. And then I went through some stuff and I learned this and then my life is ever the same. So I want to, I guess I see comments from people sometimes, they'll be like, oh, you're just copying Sam Owens. I'm like, damn right. Like the dude changed my life. This, the information that he shared with me completely altered the entire trajectory of my existence. Like it, it's put me on the palm. Do you know what I mean? It's made me a multimillionaire. It's, I'm, I love my life because of this information. So you can accuse me of copying someone else all you want, but if I deliver this message and this information and pass this information down to you with a little bit more accuracy potentially, with, with a better explanation, and it, it helps even so much as one young dude who's just trying to make it for himself, and that means that maybe I have to take some hate from a couple of hundred people, I don't care. You think negative comments, like, they're just words from people who don't even know me. So, do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll wear that with pride. So, any, um, any video ideas you've got, anything you want me to help you with, just make some comments below. Um, if you need help getting more clients, you can click the first link in the description. Um, it's a video, like I said, of me trying to sell you something. To be transparent, I'm not gonna pretend it's anything else. It's not a free training or a webinar. It's just a sales video. So you can go check it out if you want to. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's found you well. Just do this every day for three years and I promise you'll come and give me a hug and thank me. Um, actually, don't give me a hug. That might be a bit weird if I don't know you. But handshake for sure. Take care. Bye-bye. Love you lots.